At this moment, I am going to call up Mr. Junior Jabby, President and CEO of Banneker Industries. The mic is yours, sir. Good morning. It's hot. It's glad to get this mask off. Um, my name is Junior Jabby. I'm the president and CEO of Banneker Supply Chain Solutions. We were Banneker Industries. Uh, that's what we were founded by, uh, Cheryl Sneed, in 1991. Um, and uh, about a year and a half ago, unfortunately, Cheryl passed away. And I had the opportunity to assume the role of president and CEO and then eventually take over the business as owner. Uh, and that's how I come before you today. Um, this is a... Uh, I cannot say that I was blind to a lot of the issues that have been going on, but I think with the George Floyd incident and I think with the intensity of the pandemic, a lot of things have been concentrated and it's uh, stirred my conscience, so to speak, or, or stirred my spirit. Um, tell you a little bit about Banneker and a little bit about our, our success journey, because I don't think it's a, uh, we're, we're finished our journey. Um, and then what access to capital, what access to opportunity and, and what uh, equitable opportunities can do for a company. Um, Cheryl uh, was the founder and CEO of Banneker. She founded the company in 1991, but her story is all about access and opportunity. Um, she was born in New Jersey, actually, and at seven years old, she was one of the first schools to help to integrate a local elementary school. Uh, her father was very, very active in the civil rights movement, even marching with Dr. King, as many uh, uh, famous Rhode Islanders have as well. Uh, she moved up to uh, Massachusetts and got her degree in mechanical engineering from UMass Amherst. She was the first African-American woman to graduate with a degree from UMass Amherst. Um, and her story is really important to me because her story and my story are intertwined. Uh, she was like a second mom to me. Um, coming back to Rhode Island or coming into Rhode Island to start Banneker and, and take over what was then Peerless Precision, uh, was a monumental journey. And when she made that decision to buy the company that she worked for, uh, all she encountered was obstacles to access, uh, obstacles to opportunity and obstacles to access to capital. Um, as a black woman, uh, she was told that she was not gonna be given a loan unless her father uh, co-signed with her. Uh, as a woman, she probably wanted to have male partners uh, that are in the business operating it. Uh, and so she worked her way around, found some private investors, and through the help of the OIC, which was founded by uh, four gentlemen, including Cliff Montero and the late uh, Michael Van Leesten, was able to secure the funding to purchase Banneker. Uh, and from that time, fast forward 30 years, we've grown. We are one of the largest black-owned businesses in Rhode Island, but we're also one of the largest black-owned businesses in the country. And... Uh, Cheryl's story and my story intertwine when, we, when I met her at Bryant. And uh, by meeting her at Bryant, I was given the opportunity to become an intern in 2005. And fast forward, her story and my story uh, fold together because she provided me the access and the opportunity that I may not have gotten anywhere else but through a black-owned business. I think that when you look at Banneker's history, um, I think it is a success story or a success journey uh, because we can't, we cannot consider ourselves successful if those around us and those other minority and small businesses don't have an equal level of access and equal level of opportunity like we had. And it's pertinent that we do that. It's not about just Black Lives Matter, but Black livelihood matters. And it's not just about surviving, but I think that black businesses want to thrive yeah, yeah. and we want to grow and we want to stop being called minority businesses. Come on. And we just want to be called businesses and we want to be given fair opportunities to do what we do best each and every day. I think when I look back um, on our journey, you know, we've won hundreds of awards, both personal awards as well as awards for our company. We do business with several Fortune 100 clients. Um, uh, there, since I joined Banneker in 2005, every single Rhode Island governor has been through our doors. Every single U.S. Senator uh, from Rhode Island has been through our doors. Every single U.S. Representative has been through our doors, as, many, as well as many, many, many other Rhode Island elected officials, as well as elected officials from the federal uh, government. 
Um, not to mention Barack Obama coming in to Rhode Island College in 2012 and having a personal meeting with Cheryl and calling out Banneker during his speech. And despite all that, over 30 years in business, we've maybe had one state contract and that has maybe totaled $50,000. So it's not that we don't necessarily have the access because I've been sitting across the table from them. It's not exactly that uh, we don't have necessarily the equity, but we don't have the opportunity. And if companies like Banneker don't have the opportunity in a state the size of Rhode Island, then I can only imagine what it's like for some of the other business owners that are out here. And I know it's tough. So I think our story is a story that is continuing, a journey that is continuing. Um, it's hard, again, to say that we are a success, but I think now we have to open the aperture in terms of what success really is. And success isn't just about Banneker and what our team is able to do. Um, we've done a lot of great things, I think, for our team members. We have well over 50% um, people of color that are in our staff. We have a minimum wage of $15 an hour that was implemented in 2018. We have full benefits. We have a 401k match with 5%. And we've been given the opportunity to bless the families of those who work for us. And I think that's what any small business owner really wants, whether they're minority owned, woman owned, disadvantaged, you know, Native American, Alaskan owned, it doesn't matter. We all want the exact same things. It's equity its access and its opportunity. And now's the time to seize the moment, as was stated uh, prior, um, for all those in different areas. My focus is on business and making sure that we have access to capital, we have access to opportunities so that we can thrive. And it's in the best interest of Rhode Island, it's in the best interest of all small businesses and the best interest of all businesses um, to help us. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it.